Hello everyone, good evening to Easy Dharma for Difficult Times. My name is Pastor Nero and these are evening sessions that are done by either myself or Pastor David where we share a little bit of Dharma with all of you. So if you're joining for the first time, welcome. Thank you for joining. Let me just um, refresh my page to see who's online tonight. And uh, while my page is refreshing, I'll just talk a little bit about what I'm going to be sharing with all of you today and over the next couple of sessions. What I'm going to be sharing with you is what is known as the Six Perfections. And um, those of you who know a little bit about Buddhism, um, especially um, Vajrayana Buddhism or Mahayana Buddhism, in fact, will know... Um, We'll probably have heard of something called the Six Perfections. So I see quite a few people have joined. Uh, Sukhvan is online. Uh, Sharon, Mr. Lam, uh, Tata Ong, good evening to you too. Glad you can uh, join us again for these sessions. Uh, I do see more people have joined, but I can't see who exactly. Oh, Jacinta Go, good evening. Hello, Sharon, and everyone here. So today I'm just going to go get straight into it. So I'm going to be talking about what is known as the six perfections. Now, the I think over the last couple, well, since the, the start of this series of sharings by myself and, and Pastor David, um, the Easy Dharma for Difficult Times series of live streamings on Kuchara's Facebook page, um, those of you who have been watching from the beginning always, I mean, not always, but I mean, you will know that I stress a lot on things like the Four Noble Truths. And when we get to the Four Noble Truths, the fourth Noble Truth is that the way out of suffering is actually to practice the Dharma. So far, I what I've shared with you necessarily hasn't been that practical. Um, there have been certain sessions where it has been more of a practical angle on what we do in in daily life but on the on the i mean for the majority of it it has been more on the theory base but now here we have the six perfections now somebody asked me um i think last week so you've been talking about the four noble truths and you know how to practice and karma and things like that but how do we actually practice the dharma and the six perfections is basically the epitome of practicing the Dharma because they actually, they themselves cover the, um, the path of practice according to the, uh, the Mahayana tradition. So see, we've got some more people that have come online. Uh, Irene Lim's online, Ramesh is uh, back again. And... Um, Jillian is also back, Pastor Hani, Karen Wong, and, and uh, Yu Sang is also online. Thank you very much for joining today's session. So when we talk about the six perfections, there is a... these Why they're called perfections? They're called perfections is because they lead you to perfection. If you practice these six things in, in daily life, it is not about practicing these things when you sit down in front of your altar and, and you pray and you do your daily sadhana and you do your mantras. This is how you actually transform the rest of your life to become Dharma practice. And again, they're called perfections because they lead you to perfection. And that, this perfection that I'm talking about is enlightenment. It is Buddhahood. So these six things, I think Pastor David has already posted what they are. Let me just check. Yep. So the six are generosity, discipline, patience, diligence, meditative concentration, and wisdom. So I'm going to be going through these um, and explaining more about them and more about how we actually engage in practicing the six perfections in daily life. So the first one is um, generosity. So the word for um, generosity in Sanskrit is actually dana. Now, a lot of us that have been practicing Buddhism for a while know of 
we, we have this thing where we say we're going to go to the temple to make dana offerings. Okay? Um, so this can involve things like robes for the sangha. It can involve um, uh, giving sponsorship for the for the sangha in all of their in all of their need for for all of their needs basically, and that's known as dana. Now dana itself literally means being generous. It means giving. So when I talk about generosity, there is a couple of ways that we can um, kind of think about what being generous actually means. So the explanation that I'm going to use today and for the rest of these sessions when I'm talking about the six perfections follows the, the way that the Lam Rim um, explains these six perfections and how to practice them in daily life because there are many many different ways many ways of explaining um, the six perfections and how to practice it so um, oh Florence is also online good evening Pastor Antoinette good evening and um, Esther Go is also online thank you for joining today's session so I'm talking about generosity now the way that the Lamrim explains it, generosity uh, specifically is that it can be um, you can basically categorize forms of generosity into three types the first type is giving material things material items the second is giving the Dharma and the third is giving fearlessness all of these three things we can actually put in right now into practice in our daily lives so the first one is material items so this is usually what we think of when we think of being a generous person when we think of being a generous person we think oh i'm going to sponsor this for you know i'm going to give this to this charity maybe i'll help this charity raise enough money or um, get the items or donate them the items that they need um, you also think about giving to your family giving your friends giving things like gifts so these are all quite common forms of um, giving and giving material items. The way the Lam Rim explains it is more than just that because these things usually when we give, when we give to our friends, when we give to our family, it is a kind of very um, common form of giving. But the Lam Rim gives uh, a more detailed explanation of what it means to give something materially. The first is that you give people what they actually need. Okay? So this will be obvious things like what do people need? They need food, they need clothing, they need shelter. So from a um, a more physical aspect of it, these things kind of corresponds to what we think about as being generous already. So these, it's, 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 it's quite fairly obvious what it, what, what it means. So if you have something, you give it to the person that needs it. But this form of generosity means that you give, um, it is not a, a form of generosity in which maybe you have a hundred ringgit in your hand and you're going to give that hundred ringgit away. It's not that form of generosity because that actually isn't the generosity that Buddhist scripture actually advises us to do because that hundred ringgit that you have in your hand, you might need to survive. You might need to feed yourself and then clothe yourself, have shelter, look after your family. Whatever you have left is and spare is actually what you, um, you give to other people. Okay, that is from the physical side of it, but generosity actually, giving of material things, actually goes far beyond physical items. And this giving, this generosity, is actually of yourself. Okay, so how do you give yourself to other people? It's quite simple. You give people your time. You give people your effort. Um, 
What does it mean by doing that? By, by, by giving your effort, okay? It means that if you know that somebody is going through an emotional problem, you know somebody is going through a difficult time in their lives, you actually give your time to talk with them. You give your time to provide them emotional release. You give them uh, your time and effort to help them cope with whatever they're going through. So that's one way of looking at um, giving generously, okay? Or just giving generosity. And what this does actually is, okay, I'll get to that bit in a minute. Okay, if anybody has any questions about this, please do uh, put a comment and um, I will answer the question. The second form of generosity that I, that I mentioned earlier, there's three forms. The second form is actually giving of the Dharma. And most of the people that I've seen on here today, oh, I've just seen some more people come on. Um, I see Joy is online. Abby is also online. Hello. Uh, Cindy Pastahani has joined us this evening. Jia Seng, Yinping, Iman, Pastor Tatming, and Celeste. And Elsie is also online. And who else? Okay, that's all I can see so far. Good evening to everyone that's just joined. Over, over these sessions, because it's going to take up probably one or two sessions for me to explain everything. I'm going to be talking about the six perfections. So I've been talking about the first perfection so far, which is generosity. And um, earlier on, I mentioned that generosity is actually divided into three. It can be divided into three aspects. The first is giving of material items to those who need it and actually providing them with what they need. The second, which I'm going to explain now, is giving of the Dharma. Now, for... Most people, actually I've seen a lot of people, a lot of the people here watching are actually, um, have actually been practicing the Dharma for a while and probably do have a little bit of Dharma knowledge. So giving of the Dharma is actually sharing what you already know of the Dharma with other people who are interested in, in the Dharma and in practicing. So again, this is something that I mentioned in, in my previous session or the session before. If you think that you don't know enough about a particular topic or about a particular subject, it's very easy for you to get the answer, especially in Kachara. Where do you go? Where do you turn to? You turn to people like the pastors. If you have questions, you ask the pastors to clarify things. And then once you know something well, after you have... Uh, understood it and then after you've been practicing it for a while you can actually share that with other people this is what it means by being generous with the dharma but it also means actually helping people who know more dharma than you to be able to spread that knowledge because dharma as we've seen as i've explained in my previous sessions and as pastor david has been explaining in his, in his previous sessions dharma is the the one thing that is transformational enough to actually help you out of your suffering so this can include things like donating to um, a temple helping um, any projects that people might be doing dharma projects this can be um, and if you can't donate you can donate of your time if you can because all Dharma institutions always need help in one way or another to actually preserve the Dharma and then spread it. So you can donate your time. You can come and volunteer. These are all ways in which uh, you can be generous from the aspect, from the side of the Dharma. Now, the third aspect of generosity is known as uh, giving fearlessness. Okay, so what does that mean? It means to protect people from being afraid. And actually, it doesn't just 
uh, cover people. It covers all sentient beings. But the two categories of sentient beings that we usually interact with are people and animals. So giving fearlessness or protecting sentient beings from having fear can include things like um, saving animals from slaughter. It can include um, saving animals from deplorable conditions. It can also be, from the human side of it, it can be stopping people from being in situations where they're afraid and where you know that they're going to be harmed or that there is a very, very large potential for them to be harmed. Okay. The thing is, why is giving fearlessness important? Because when you're afraid of something, it is an emotion that can be all-encompassing, especially for animals and humans, and actually all sentient beings, but these two because we interact with them the most out of all of the realms, the beings in the other realms. Fear is a emotion that is very um, constricting. It constricts you to a certain extent where you can't think of much else. There are two very, very um, powerful emotions that when people um, go through them, they usually can't think of anything else. And these two are anger and fear. So these two are actually um, directly countered within the six perfections. In fact, the six perfections counters all negative emotional states or all um, obstructions or obscurations, emotional obstructions, emotional obscurations. That's how it's termed within Buddhism. So when you give fearlessness, when you, when, when you provide people with a sense of protection, it is it provides them enough emotional leeway to actually be able to practice the Dharma themselves. Okay, so this emotional protection, I mean, this protection that you give people from fear is not just physical, it is also emotional. That is why if you see somebody who is practicing Buddhism well and you talk to them, you feel like you feel protected okay this is something that actually Tamrimichi used to do a lot now those of you who had the fortune to meet Tamrimichi will know that he was actually a very private person so you might not have met him often in person but he did give people protection from fear and that protection was also coupled with the giving of dharma because how he did that was he gave them the dharma okay so here we can see that it kind of intermingles when it comes to um, this particular aspect of how samrimji uh, interacted with people was that he gave people fearlessness he gave people and he still does he gives people a sense of protection from fears that they that they have or that they might be going through so there's that's kind of the three ways in which we give one is material needs one is um giving of the dharma and the sec and the third sorry is giving of fearlessness but then the question the question that um, kind of arises from there is, okay, so you've kind of explained what to do, but I already know that. I know how, I know that I should be a more generous person. I know that I should be giving to other people, giving of my time, of my effort. But how do I actually go about doing it? Because you kind of have to force yourself to do it once or twice, and then you kind of get caught up in day-to-day -day life, and then you forget about being generous you forget about practicing generosity. So there is two ways in which to train yourself to be a generous person. One is 
actually just to force yourself to be generous. So I've explained three types of ways of being generous. So maybe you can set yourself a target or a goal. In one week, I'm going to do three types of lesson detachment. When you have lesson detachment, you can actually give things more easier. So this, you can give more uh, physical things. You can actually also, it is also a method in which you can give more of your own time, more of your own effort. So these are the two things that Lam Rim says to make you a more compassionate person. How to practice it is one, just to force yourself to do it until it becomes habit. And after it becomes habit, your generous nature actually just arises from there. It becomes spontaneous. And if you can't do that, the other method is to meditate on impermanence. And this lessens attachment. When attachment is lessened, you, it is more easier for you to be spontaneously generous with whatever you have. Okay, so I think we do have a question. There's one from Iman. Okay, hi, there's a question from Iman. Hi, Pastor Nirod, what is the most effective way to overcome fear from the Buddhist perspective? Okay, Iman, I need you to elaborate a little bit more um, in the sense of um, what sort of fear? Because um, if you're talking about fear itself, um, there are different ways and different methods that you can use to actually overcome fear, but it will depend on what sort of fear. Now, if it is a, um, a, it can be a physical fear, such as you're extremely scared of, um, I don't know, maybe being robbed. There's one, one thing. Um, there is also um, kind of emotional fears that you think that you are getting into, you, you don't want to become too close with, say, a family member because you, you, you think that um, they're going to hurt you in some way or another, emotionally. So it, there, it, there are actually many ways to overcome this, but what sort of fear, it depends what sort of fear. One of the general um, methods of, of overcoming fear is actually, um, one is to, sorry, there's a fly. Um, one is to uh, meditate on um, a particular um, Buddha, a Buddha deity, like a Yidam, um, and to develop faith and trust in a, in a Yidam in that manner. The second is actually to meditate on karma. Because when you meditate or contemplate on karma, you kind of get to the, to the core of where that fear actually comes from. And when you get to the core of that fear, you can actually deal with it in a better manner. So, for example, if you're afraid of being robbed, maybe you are. Maybe you were robbed or previously. So that kind of left a very deep emotional impact, and you have that fear, and that fear is and um, stuck. So the way to overcome that is actually to contemplate on karma. So you understand that I had a the karma to be robbed, but that doesn't necessarily mean, A, that I have the karma to be robbed. B, continuing on with that, the person who robbed me, okay, was also, um, there's a karmic connection between me and that person. So because of that karmic connection, it manifested in me being robbed, me being wronged in this life, okay? But you ha kind of have to turn it on its head. If, the, if that person robbed you in this life, perhaps as according to the, to the law of karma, perhaps you robbed that person in a previous life. So you see here, it becomes a, you, 
you see the the karmic connection between yourself and another person another being another situation and you realize that there is a karmic connection there when you realize that there's a karmic connection there you can actually help that can actually help you to let go of any emotional um struggles you might be going through because you actually see things from another perspective you don't see it from they harmed me they wronged me you see the the picture is broader than that so when you take a step back and see the broader picture than that you realize that the person that you're um fearful about or the situation in which you're fearful about actually has a cause it has a reason okay and that is karma so when you think about karma, you actually lessen your emotional reaction to it. So in this case, if somebody robbed you previously and you do this contemplation of karma and you're able to step back from the immediate emotion of remembering that you were robbed, you're able to let go of that emotional reaction. When you let go of that emotional reaction, you're able to let go of fear of being robbed in the future because that fear comes from a previous emotional reaction when you were originally robbed so when that emotion is lessened then the fear that you're feeling for now because you don't want to be robbed it lessens okay i hope that made sense if it didn't make sense please let me know in the comments okay um LC Toy says, give and spend, God will send. Okay. Um, I'm going to change that a little bit. Give and spend, merit will send. And there's a reason I say that. One of the things that a lot of people think about when, um, or talk about, or want to discuss about when they talk about in, in Buddhism is that how come this person is rich and how come I'm not? Or how come this person has a Porsche and how come I, I don't? Okay. Um, and the, the answer is karma. Okay. You might um, not have generated the karma to have a Porsche. You might not have generated the karma to have a million ringgit in your bank account. Okay. But... Um, this actually stems from having, I mean, this is not going to sound fair, but this is the truth of the matter according to karma, okay? It is because you have generated a lot of miserliness in previous lifetimes. So when you've been miserly, what does it mean by to be miserly? When you have something, you hoard it for yourself and you don't give it. You're not a generous person. And here I am not talking about I have enough to live, I have enough to eat, I have shelter over my head. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about anything in excess of that. Whether it is money, whether it is material goods, whether it is your time or your effort. When you're miserly, you create the karmic conditions not to have things in the future or not to have things in future lives. So the direct counter to this is actually being generous. It is being um, more giving. When you give more, you will get more. And that's why I changed your little, your, your comment to give and spend, merit will send. Because when you, you're generous and you, ge and you generate merit, that will lead you to always having the things that you need to survive in the future. Okay? Whether that is... Um, money whether it is material items to to live and to survive or whether it is um having people around you that you can rely upon okay that is all due to being a generous person so i took your little comment and i tweaked it a little bit all right um make more sense okay okay a bit of a side topic i think everyone here knows Zambala. Zambala is a deity that is known as a wealth deity. They say you pray to Zambala and you will get your money, you will get your whatever you want. You will get your wealth, you will get 
you know, you'll always have your material needs met. And um, that is true. Dambala's um, uh, practice can, uh, can grant you that. But actually, Zambala's practice is more than that. Zambala's practice actually generates um, generosity. Okay? It's used as a meditational practice to help increase one, one's um, energy of generosity. Okay, so I think people are back. Okay. Elsie says, I always meditate on having abundance so that I can give more. Is it okay? It's okay to, to do that, but actually the better way of doing it is not to meditate on abundance. It's actually to contemplate and be grateful for what we have now. Coupled with contemplation of impermanence, you will actually find that a lot of the things you have, you can actually give to other people. And I'm, I don't just mean physically, I mean emotionally, I mean with your time, with your effort. We actually all have a lot and we can almost instantaneously be a generous person. It's that we don't, we, we haven't contemplated enough. So when you contemplate on what you have and being grateful for what you have now, and you contemplate on impermanence, it's very easy to practice generosity and to actually be a very generous person. Okay, so further down, Yi Ling has a question. Well, thank you for joining. Can generosity become conditional in the sense that you pray for more so that you can give more? Is that negative? Um, usually in day-to-day -day life, Generosity is conditional anyway. When you give somebody a gift on their birthday, you think yourself a generous person, but in the back of your mind, you're actually expecting a gift back on your birthday. I'm talking about normal level of, of what people think as being a generous person. And then if you give something to somebody, most of the time people think, you know, I've given them this thing, um, they should be happy, they should be grateful that I, that I gave it to them. So in the future, when I need help or when um, I need something, they should give it to me. And we do think in that way. We think in a, a way of being generous in a reciprocal way. I give, then I get, I give, then I get, I give, then I get. The generosity that um, the six perfections is talking about is generosity that has no want, no um, inkling of actually getting anything back in return. So in this sense, yes, generosity can be made conditional. So for example, the example that you gave in that you pray for more so that you can give more. But if you actually get down to the core of it, you're not, this isn't actually your um, motivation, okay? Because I know a lot of people will go to temples and with various gods and say, you know, help me grant a million, I mean, help me win the lot lottery. When I win the lottery, I will give, I will make uh, generous donations to that ch this particular charity, okay? Here, you're not actually de developing generosity. Here, you're actually trying to bribe the God. Okay? It's like, you know, give me what, what, I, what I want. Sorry, I'm, I'm babbling today. Give me what I want and I'll do something good. And unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. This is not the generosity that the Six Perfections is talking about. The Six Perfections is talking about generosity that has no uh, ulterior motive. And in fact, um, talking about that, um, in, the, in, in the Lam Rim it says, there are, when thinking about generosity or things that we can give, whether it is physical things, whether it is um, emotional things or, or our time, um, there, there are three things to remember. Giving, 
protecting and keeping. So giving is kind of obvious. When you give, you you give, you give whatever you want to give, your time, your money, you whatever, you know, a, a gift. You can even just smile at somebody, you know, that you walk past on the street. That's also a form of giving what? Okay. So that you give. The second is actually protecting. So protecting means that if you have something, you, um, uh, how to explain? Um, okay, so if you're giving your time, if you're giving your effort, okay, you're providing somebody with emotional support. Um, what did I say? Keeping, giving, keeping, and giving, protecting, and keeping. Um, ah, protecting. Okay. So when, when you protect things, you actually protect things from being, um, um, from being damaged, from being... Um, okay, how to explain that? Giving, giving, protecting, and keeping, correct. Protecting is when you protect whatever you have to make sure that you be, you'll be able to give it in the future. So, for example, if it is a material item, you keep things well, okay? So, maybe you have, um, somebody has given you a gift. And you are able to use, the, okay, let's just take the example of a Porsche, okay? I don't know why a Porsche is stuck in my head, but it is. Somehow you manage to get hold of a Porsche and this is your prized possession. But you know that in, your, in the future, you might want to give it to somebody else. I don't know why you would want to, but maybe... Okay, one, you want to give it to your, your kids or whatever. Your, you have something and you want to be able to give it to your kids. You protect it well. Protect it means, you know, you clean it, you keep it well, you make sure it runs well, you make sure it's clean, okay? Now, that doesn't so that you can give it to somebody else in the future. That, this actually, this aspect of protecting actually applies to everything that we have, okay? It is not just about the car, but it's also about your clothes, it's also about your house. More than that, it is also about the relationships you have with other people. And it's also about the qualities that you have, that you are generating, okay? So for example, if you know that being giving, giving is a virtuous act and when coupled with refuge and dedication will generate merit you protect it by how not getting angry you protect it by um, lessening your negative qualities you protect it by making sure that you actually keep practicing and pushing yourself to practice to become a better person to transform yourself rather than um, letting negative states get in the way now the third one is um, what did I say? Give, keeping, keeping. What does keeping mean in in this in in this context? Keeping actually means you keep it, you keep what you're doing pure from um, from uh, having ulterior motives. Okay, so if you're trying to generate mer um, trying to gener generate generosity, that's a bit of a mouthful. You keep it. Um, pure, which means that you always have to remind yourself to generate proper generosity. I keep saying generate generosity to, um, yeah, to have uh, proper generosity. It should be kept clean of impure motives. So that whole explanation that I went on a whole roundabout and world tour of everything under the sun was actually linked to what Ealing was talking about, keeping um, your generosity pure, okay, free of ulterior motives, or not, yeah, ulterior motives, okay. So LC has um, made a comment, when we, when one give, don't expect anything in return, because that is painful when expectations is not met, so better don't expect correct okay um yeah it's correct you don't expect anything back this is what the the, the way that the the, the lamrim teaches us to be generous you don't expect anything back in return 
if you do expect and you don't get, as Elsie has said, it will cause emotional pain. So Mr. Lum has said, how do we cultivate our mind to achieve that unconditional mind of not expecting any reciprocal in receiving back, i.e. giving without condition? I think we just have to take the brutal ways to force ourselves to ignore the monkey mind of always expecting something in return in future. That is actually, um, I mean, it is one way to kind of force yourself to keep doing it. But if you force yourself to keep doing it, ultimately it is not going to work. This is why the Lamrim actually um, emphasizes also meditating on impermanence. When you meditate on impermanence, you're no longer attached to anything. So you can actually give unconditionally. So this is kind of, this is, um, um, how, wait, I've lost all my words and my English has gone out the window today. I do apologize. Um, if you take it from the point of view of a material item that you have, Okay? If you're attached to it, you're not going to give it away. If you're attached to it, even if you give it away, because you're so attached to that particular object, there will be a conditional expectation of something in return. However, if you've meditated on impermanence, contemplated it, and realized that this object is um, it's, it's kind of made, it exists how it is, then one day it's not going to exist the way it exists. Okay? And that things always change you are able to lessen your attachment to it. When you're able to lessen your attachment to it, you're able to give it unconditionally. So that is the way to give unconditionally without needing, uh, without the reciprocal nature of normal giving, is you meditate, contemplate on impermanence. Um, Chung has also said, if your action is spontaneous, it is usually unconditional. If you think about it, it's probably tinged by the eight worldly concerns. Um, in some way or another, to a certain extent, what Chung has said is actually correct. But if you go deeper, even if it's spontaneous, okay, it can um, also be conditional. Um, but obviously, it is better than not giving at all. It is better than not being spontaneous about it. But the deeper you go into it, all right, if you haven't actually meditate, meditated and contemplated on things like impermanence, then it will um, be tinged with a reciprocal want, even if it is spontaneous. So... Yiling asks, so motivation should be pure? Yes, motivation should be pure, um, absolutely. Um, and again, it is not something that's going to happen overnight. Motivation is something that you need to build on, you need to progress on. Um, but Rimji always said, um, fake it till you make it, okay? And a lot of people think that this is, you know, what, how, why is this Lama telling me to fake it until I make it? Because actually, to readjust your mind to a different way of thinking, you do have to go through actions and thoughts and processes to, until your mind actually shifts in a correct manner. So even though at this moment your motivation might not be pure, it is something that we need to work on. It is something that is an everyday, program, um, an, an everyday process. So it is something that we should work on. It's not going to be pure 100% at the beginning, but that doesn't mean to say that it will, won't get to being pure, because that's what the Buddhist path is about, especially when it comes to motivation. Okay, I have seen a couple more people come on. I've got a question from Yap Yan Fang. Oh, sorry, I hope I pronounced your name right. Will people take us for granted or take advantage if we give unconditional, especially in a relationship? In relationships, shouldn't it be reciprocal? Or should it be giving without any expectation? 
It's a good question and it's a very practical question that you've asked. Now, from a day-to-day -day point of view, you would think that it would need to be um, conditional. However, from a spiritual point of view, from a point of view of actually transforming yourself on a spiritual level, the ultimate form of being generous will be completely unconditional. And yes, you are right, there will be people who will take advantage of you. And now to us, at this moment in time, that seems very unfair. Uh, that seems very, is not something that you would want. But there is a way to help you deal with that. And the way actually to help you deal with that is practicing the other six perfections. Uh, two perfections in particular. One is um, patience and the other one is um, joyous effort and diligence. So in order to answer your question fully, which I'm not going to be able to do in this session and I do apologize, it would be good if you watch the, my future sessions on the, the remaining of the six perfections. Um, my immediate next session will actually be on discipline, okay? The session after that will be on patience, and then the session after that, I think, will be on um, joyous effort. Um, we see how much we can cover in each session. Um, okay? So I, I can't answer that in its entirety in this session because it does include the practice of the other six perfections. But from a, from a Buddhist point of view, if you're practicing the six perfections and the Bodhisattva Mahayana path, then yes, ultimately, your giving will be completely unconditional, no matter how you are um, treated in the future, uh, because of your unconditional giving, whether if it's in a, a beneficial manner or whether it's in a negative manner, by practicing the six perfections, one, you'll be able to deal with anything that comes your way, 100%. And by doing that, it may seem unfair now, but that is the way to real spiritual, emotional uh, and mental transformation. So, we've seen, um, I think I've actually finished with generosity for today's session. If you do have any questions, please ask them because you've still got a little bit of time left. I see that there's two comments from Elsie. Um, yes, I have always have the thought that I have endless streams of income and cannot finish spending my money. See? True, true right? Okay. And... Um, Elsie replied to, um, yep, and she said, once you give, don't be attached to it. If you think people take advantage, it is their karma they are creating. Yeah, you're right. You're right with that. If people take advantage of you when you give, when you're giving, when you're practicing generosity, it is negative karma that they're creating. And actually, rather than be emotionally upset with them, we should actually have more compassion towards them because they might not be aware of what they're doing and how and hurting you, uh, whether it's it's usually emotional and um, or even they might even know that they are hurting you, but they they still want to go through with, with whatever they're doing. So here you see they're actually just creating more trouble and more negative karma for themselves doing that. So I don't see any more questions for today's session. So I will end here. So I hope um, you've understood a little bit more about generosity. And today's questions have been very interesting. Um, 
so please do ask when when we're on live streaming if something is um, unclear or you you need more of an example please do ask um, during my sessions, even during Pastor David's sessions, we're more than happy to help to answer your questions. So today I finished the first, excuse me, the first of the six perfections, which is generosity. Tomorrow is a Thursday, I think. Yes, today's a Wednesday. So tomorrow is a Thursday. So tomorrow there won't be any... Um, any live streaming, any session here at 9 p.m. We will continue on Friday and Pastor David will be giving the Friday session. So I'll be back on Saturday and on Saturday I'll be talking about the perfection of discipline. So thank you everyone for joining tonight's session. Let's do a quick um, dedication before we end. Chanjusamjorimbuje, Gekishamaziwadan, so, Kodan de Balochanam, Yopatso Chick shook them so. Thank you everyone for joining uh, the session this evening. Stay home, stay safe, and stay spiritual. <laughs>